Gravity makes every mass in the universe attract every other mass, but it is relatively weak. In everyday life, only the mass of the Earth, taken as a whole, is large enough for its gravity to be easily felt. An asteroid, a satellite or a planet has to be at least a few hundred kilometers in size for its gravity to hold it together and force it to become more or less spherical. So gravity is unable to explain why relatively small objects, like a rock, a tree or human being, keep their shapes. There has to be one or more other fundamental forces. There are some simple phenomena that hint at the existence of these other forces. When we rub certain resinous materials, they attract small objects. We call that static electricity. Sometimes there are sparks, and we figured out that lightning was also an electrical phenomenon, but on a larger scale. There also exists certain minerals that have the power to attract certain metals, and we call them magnets. Planet Earth itself acts like a giant magnet. There are two types of electric charge that we named positive and negative. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract. Certain combinations of materials, when brought together, result in a flow of charge so we can construct batteries that can make electrical current travel continuously through closed conductive paths called circuits. We discovered that the current can exert a force on a magnet, which reveals that electricity and magnetism are two aspects of the same electromagnetic force. This force is one trillion 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 times stronger than gravity. But because the effects of the two types of charges often cancel out, it is not always directly noticeable. Gravity and electromagnetism are forces at a distance. They can act between objects that do not touch, even if there is only vacuum between them. To write down the equations that describe them, it is useful to introduce the concept of force field. An object acts as the source of a force by creating a field around itself and other objects react to that field. Even if electromagnetism is a single unified phenomenon, it is useful to describe it by using two distinct fields, one electric, one magnetic. These fields can interact. A changing electric field creates a magnetic field and a changing magnetic field creates an electric field. We discovered that the creation and propagation of light can be explained by the mutual interaction of electric and magnetic fields. Light is an electromagnetic wave. As physics reached deeper and deeper into the fundamental structure of matter, it became clear that at scales of the order of a billionth of a meter, matter is made of discrete building blocks called atoms, which are themselves made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Neutrons are electrically neutral, they have no electric charge. A proton carries a certain amount of positive charge, and an electron carries the same amount of charge, but negative. In the center of each atom, there is a nucleus that contains one or more protons and can also contain neutrons. There is a problem with this model. How do nuclei that contain several protons stay together? Since the protons, being all positively charged, repel each other electrically, there has to be one or more nuclear forces that are stronger than electrical forces. We discovered that there are two of them. One type holds the nucleus together against electrical repulsion, and the other can change neutrons into protons, or protons into neutrons, during some types of nuclear processes. So, is this all there is to physics? Can we explain the behavior of everything in the universe by combining the natural inertia of objects with the effects of gravity, electromagnetism, and the two nuclear forces? Not quite. The very existence of stable atoms requires that there are additional fundamental principles at work. Since negatively charged electrons are attracted by positively charged nuclei, it would be natural to think that they revolve in orbits around them, like planets around stars. But according to electromagnetic theory, this orbital motion would create ripples in the electric field, which should radiate outward as electromagnetic waves. Electrons in atoms should continuously emit light, and as they lose their orbital energy, they should spiral downward and crash on the nucleus of their atom within a fraction of a second. Why this does not happen was explained by the discovery that the building blocks of matter obey a set of subtle rules 
known as quantum mechanics. According to quantum mechanics, the basic properties of the building blocks of matter, like position and speed, are best described by distributions by spreads instead of single well-defined values. These distributions oscillate in a way that mimics the behavior of waves. They can interfere, sometimes reinforcing themselves when two crests coincide, and sometimes canceling out when a crest meets a trough. When electrons settle in the other regions of an atom, they spread in stable symmetric clouds that surround the nucleus. Since there is no orbital motion that can create ripples in the electric field, the atom can exist without emitting light all the time. Its stability is made possible by the quantum behavior of the electrons. If the stability of a single atom can only be explained by invoking the rules of quantum mechanics, it is clear that this is also the case for chemical bonding, the links between atoms that make molecules possible. So, in order to explain how molecules, rocks, trees and human beings keep their shapes, we have to invoke nuclear forces to keep the nucleus of each atom together, electromagnetic forces to account for the basic facts that electrons are attracted to nuclei in order to form neutral atoms, but we also need to invoke the principles of quantum mechanics. Electrical attractions and repulsions between the charges within molecules certainly play their part. But the rules of quantum mechanics are needed to explain why the attractions between unlike charges do not overwhelm the repulsions between like charges. In a certain configuration, all effects balance out, which allows molecules to be stable, liquids to have some cohesion, and solids to keep their shapes.